Hello everybody, my name is Ben Baird. We're out here at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods today. 7060 Quarry Road, Canfield, Ohio. Um, it is September again, which means our uh, annual Red, White & True event is coming up. Um, I believe this is our 10th annual Red, White & True. Um, the last nine years have been uh, nothing but spectacular and amazing. Um, this year we're going to follow suit like we did last year. We're going to try to keep things more virtual and more off-site uh, due to the COVID uh, virus again. Um, so today I'll be showing you guys around a little bit. We'll be doing a virtual tour and I'll try to show you guys the ins and outs of the operation and how we do things on a daily basis here. Um, so to get things kicked off here, we're gonna make our way over to the stacker. Um, the stacker would be the first location for all uh, lumber that comes into our mill. Uh, what's gonna take place in the stacker is they're gonna grade the lumber, um, decide whether it's you know one common, two common, facing better. Um, from there, they're gonna stick the lumber. There's gonna be layers with sticks in between it. What that does is that ensures that when we put it into the kiln, uh, all the air can move equally through that bunk of lumber and ensure that it's gonna come out at that six to eight percent moisture content that we're after. That ensures that when, that when we're done manufacturing it and it goes into your home, uh, as long as the environment in your home is right, the humidity is right, um, you'll have a good stable product in your, in your home. So let's go ahead and let's make our way over here and I'll show you guys around a little bit. So as the lumber comes in, the trucks are going to come through the gate. They're going to go down, turn around, and uh, Gary, who actually runs the entire rough lumber operation for the most part, um, he's going to take care of unloading the trucks and taking them all the bunks around back. Um, they're going to wax the ends. What waxing the ends does is that ensures that the ends of the boards don't crack too much when they go into the kiln. Um, if we weren't to wax the end of the board, we would end up losing a lot more material off the end of each board. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the uh, inside of the stacker and uh, see if they're running. If not, I'll just explain to you guys how it all works. So here we are guys, we're inside the stacker. Um, as you can see, the lumber's laid out here on the chains. Uh, what would normally be happening is down there at the end, they would be dump dumping layer by layer bunks of lumber onto this grading chain. Um, normally the gentleman I mentioned earlier, Gary, Gary Hoover, uh, would be up there grading the lumber. Um, from there it's gonna come down, they're gonna batch it to a certain width, and then it's gonna come down here and they're gonna drop it onto these sticks. Um, and like I said, the sticks are to ensure that there's openings through each bunk of lumber so the air movement can flow through there and ensure that we're getting the right moisture content when it comes out of the kiln. So after we come out of the stacker, guys, and everything has sticks on it and it's all been layered, uh, the next step is the kiln. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, you know, how long does something sit in the kiln? How hot does the kiln have to be um, to dry the wood? And that actually all depends on the thickness and the species of the wood. Um, it can take as short as seven days and as long as uh, multiple weeks. Um, four quarter, meaning one inch, is going to dry the quickest because it's the thinnest material we'll buy in. Um, all the way up to seven, eight, ten, and twelve quarter lumber, um, which is going to take way longer to dry because it's obviously way thicker. Um, poplar is going to be uh, one of your quicker drying lumbers. Um, the harder material is, you get into the red oaks and the white oaks, you're going to have a little bit more time in the kiln. Um, as you can see behind me here, this is what the inside of a kiln looks like. Um, nothing too fancy. They're actually drying uh, seven quarter red oak and uh, some seven quarter poplar down there. So that would be one of your longer drying materials because it's inch and three quarter thick coming in. All right, guys, so after the lumber leaves the kiln, um, the next step would be the rough mill here behind me. Um, what's going to happen here is they're going to surface the material um, and they're going to address the material as far as thickness, uh, width, and length goes. They're also going to determine what this material is going to be used for, whether that be flooring, um, maybe component blanks for moldings and S4S, uh, maybe door parts or butcher blocks. So let's go ahead, we'll go in here and I'll kind of show you guys how everything works in here. Alrighty guys, so here we are, we're out here in the rough mill. Um, like I said, this is where they size all the lumber and determine uh, what it's going to be used for. So if we look over here, there's going to be multiple bunks of lumber. Um, they're going to slowly drop those onto those chains and they're going to feed them through this planer here, one board at a time. Um, 
once they come through the planer, Steve Cronin is going to go ahead and he has seven lasers there. What those lasers are doing is determining what rips he's going to get out of what board. Um, he could get one board out of a board or he could get multiple boards out of a board. What that means is, is if he has a 10 inch board and there's a knot in the center of it, he'll go ahead and he'll rip a strip out of the center to get rid of that knot and he'll be left with two good pieces on each side. Um, as it moves up the line here, it's going to get to the rip saw, the gang rip saw. Um, there's seven movable blades in that rip saw. So as each board gets to the rip saw, it has an identification number from when Cronin went ahead and assessed it at the lasers. Once that board gets to the rip saw, those blades are going to move into position and the board's going to go through the rip saw and you're going to be left with whatever you told the laser to do from the start. As we move up the line here, the boards are coming out the back of the gang rip saw. They're eventually going to make their way around to the wood eye and the crosscut saw. But in the meantime, there's a gentleman up here pulling the edging off. What he's doing with the edging is he's throwing it in our hog here, and that's going to go ahead and turn those pieces of wood into fine sawdust that we can go ahead and use for fuel, whether it be heat in the wintertime or uh, sometimes we'll sell it uh, for, uh, for bedding for farm animals. Alrighty guys, so the rip saw went ahead and addressed our width. Now we need to address the length. Um, the wood is going to come down this chain and it's going to go through what we call the wood eye. All the wood eye is is pretty much an x-ray machine or an MRI machine for lumber. It's going to identify any defect inside that wood that the human eye can't see. Um, so once it goes through the wood eye, the wood eye is going to go ahead and send information to the crosscut saw and it'll cut out all the defects um, or Terry will have it programmed to cut certain lengths as it's going through. So here at the end of the line after it comes through the crosscut saw and everything um, it's either going to get kicked out if it's a shorter piece meaning it could be uh, used for door parts uh, maybe they're cutting flooring or maybe they're cutting up uh, short pieces for our finger joiner for our beautiful uh, prime paint grade uh, finger joint poplar product. Um, anything that doesn't get kicked out here, maybe the longer material is going to make it to the chains back here. That's where they're going to pull component inventory as far as, you know, maybe it's going to be used for S4S or moldings. They'll pull all the longer material on these carts right here. Uh, those will then be taken over to warehouse uh, three where we store all of our component inventory. Alrighty guys, so after the rough mill, the, uh, all the lumber is going to get stored away in what we refer to as Warehouse 3. Um, everything in Warehouse 3 is component inventory. Uh, that could mean it's going for door components, meaning door parts, door rails, uh, door panels, or it could be going for uh, molding components. So, you know, maybe a door casing or a piece of baseboard or a shoe mold. Um, we even have stair, tre uh, stair tread blanks in here. Like I said, everything that goes through the rough mill will end up over in this building at some point or another. Um, as you can see, there's a massive amount of lumber in here. Everything is sorted by width, thickness, and species. So, um, you know, if it's four quarter, three and five poplar, it's all gonna be in one area. Um, all the red oaks together, all the hickories together. And like I said, all the bunks are sorted by thickness and width as well. So this is what uh, component inventory would look like before it hits the finish shop and gets turned into a finished product for your home. Alrighty guys, so here we are, we're in the finish mill. This is where, uh, what I like to say, this is where the magic happens. Uh, this is where all the products are finalized. Um, a lot of things go on in here. We're making butcher blocks in here. Uh, we're making door parts. We're actually building doors in here. And then all of our S4S and all of our moldings are being uh, produced in here. So we'll make our way up here and I'm going to try to find a few different machines that are running so I can explain them to you guys. Like I said, uh, we make all of our door parts in here, our doors are assembled in here. And then we're also going to make any butcher block, arch casing, um, uh, any casing, baseboard. So as we can see here, these guys are running some material right now. It looks like a scribe mold. Um, 
So this is Mike Hurd. He's been with us quite a few years. He's one of our motor operators, um, one of six, but we'll make our way up here. We'll see what else we got running. All righty guys, so here we are, what we call a 22HYL. It's a winding motor. Um, they're starting down here with red oak component lumber. And what they're ending up with is a finished door jam. So if we take a look over here, this door jam actually has a relief cut in the back to help with uh, stability once it is uh, installed into your home. And then we go ahead and we put a roundover on it as well. If we step down here, you can see all Sean's starting with is just a square stock piece of lumber. There's nothing to this piece of wood when Sean gets it. Uh, it's just been surfaced, ripped to width and length out in the rough mill. And then from here, he's gonna go ahead and turn it into a door jam. As we make our way over here, we got uh, our sander. So it looks like they're sanding one by four right now. Um, how this all works is when we run one by four, or really any dimensional lumber through a molder, we're gonna leave about 20 thousandths on it over thickness to be sand off. Uh, we sand one face of it, uh, so you're left with one surface face and uh, two good sides. Alrighty everybody, so here we are, we're up in the door shop. I'm here with a gentleman by the name of Sam Phillips. Uh, Sam, how long have you been with us? Uh, eight years now. So. You talk about somebody who really takes pride in what they do and a true American craftsman, uh, Sam's all of those things. So, Sam, what do you do for us here and uh, what goes into your uh, 40 hours, I guess? Well, I'm a custom door parts machinist. I take all the custom parts and make them into usable parts to build our custom doors. And uh, we, per we have machine to a pretty high tolerance, about 5,000 plus or minus so that the doors come out pretty uh, accurate every time. So. Out of all the places you've worked, Sam, I mean, as far as the uh, tolerance and the uh, quality control here at Baird Brothers, I mean, where, where would you say we rank? Oh, definitely top notch. Yeah, everyone. There you guys go. Uh, like I said, this is Sam Phillips, uh, great craftsman and uh, really does an awesome job for us. So we appreciate you, Sam. Thank you. All righty, guys, here I am. I'm here with Jason Hoops. Um, Jason Hoops does, uh, well, he does a lot of things. He makes all of our uh, butcher box, all of our workbench tops. Um, he does all of our arch casings and probably a few other things that I'm unaware of. But um, Jason, how long have you been with us? I've been here 11 years. Okay, and uh, just explain to everybody, you know, how you go about assembling a top or, uh, you know, how these sink cutouts are done and what the holes are for and everything. Okay, usually I'm giving an order that has everything on it as far as what the order is calling for. So I gather all my material, get everything ready to go, glue everything together, and then I send my pieces to the CNC. They cut out the sinks, put the fancy connectors in that we use to tie everything together when we make miters and cutouts so that everything fits and goes together good and tight. So Jason just made that seem really simple, but what he actually just explained can take, I don't know what, Jason, about two, two, to, two to three weeks for you to complete? Yeah, from start to finish. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Like he said, he's got to get the uh, lumber out of the rough lumber. Um, and he's actually doing all of his own sizing and everything. So a lot of his material doesn't go through the rough mill like my material would for my guys on the motor. So. Uh, Jason, thank you. We appreciate you and uh, everything you do for us. All right, thank you. All righty, guys. So after everything gets done going through the finish shop, um, if it's a stock product, it's ultimately going to end up over here in what we call the trim shop. Um, as we walk up this way, you're going to see a ton of different variety of woods. Um, right now, back where we're at, this is where most of our long finger jointed prime products are stocked. Um, we stock those in 16 foot and 8 foot lengths. Those are those short pieces we've talked about that we take and we join them back together and uh, ultimately end up priming it and it creates a beautiful uh, paint grade product. If you flip the back of this product over, you'll see what I'm talking about, about taking these short pieces and joining them together to create one long 16 foot piece of trim. Um, as we work our way up front, 
We're gonna see maybe some staging areas for special orders like we got here on the left. Anything that's a special order that's not being out sh shipped out immediately is gonna end up on these racks somewhere. Um, Jack Rafiti's in charge of all that. He does an awesome job staging and keeping track of orders for us. Um, as we move up a little farther, you're gonna see some red oak casings, um, maybe some poplar casings. Um, Sam mentioned in the door shop about how the door shop keeps a 5,000 tolerance with all door parts and everything. Um, that's one awesome thing about Baird Brothers is that's not just the door shop, that's all of Baird Brothers. We hold a very tight tolerance and uh, have a very high quality standard. Um, that's one thing we pride ourselves on and I think that's what got us here um, was the high quality standard that the three brothers, Howard, Dick and Paul held um, when they started the company 61 years ago. So we're very thankful and we're very blessed in the sense that we have what we have, but we still have the same values. We still um, hold very tight tolerances, have very high expectations, and all of our employees know that, that when a product leaves this building or leaves the gate or, um, you know, is getting shipped to California or even Campfield, um, it has our name on it. And when I say our name, I don't mean Baird's name. It's the whole company. And these guys really understand that. They do a great job. They really take pride in what they do. And um, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So uh, thank you to all of our employees. And uh, hopefully we have a good red, white, and true. Alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap things up for the 2021 Red, White and True uh, tour. Um, if you guys have any interest or uh, if you guys need anything from us, feel free to jump online or come out to our store. Um, we're having the big Red, White and True, True sale. Everything is 10% off. Um, I strongly encourage you guys to jump online. Um, if you order everything online, you can scoop right in and grab it at will call. It's super quick and simple. Um, Thank you to the, the community and all of our employees. If it wasn't for you guys, we, get, we, we simply would not be here. Um, the community has been absolutely unbelievable in the support and helping us in anything that we need. Um, they've been with us for 60 years and they've never left us as long as our employees. So that's really awesome to see. Um, this day is ultimately for you guys. If there's anything we can do to enhance it, please let us know. And we look forward to seeing you. Thank you again and have a good day.